All right, you can all quit asking about it. Surprisingly high number of people asking me in live streams and in comments, how's the Mac Mini, how's the Mac Mini? Let's talk about the Mac Mini. So today I figured, you know what? We don't have a crazy amount of things to say about it because it's a decent product. But without further ado, here is my Mac Mini review. So obviously, this Mac Mini overhaul was long overdue. It has been long too far. Apple has just left the Mac Mini on that dusty corner of the Apple Store and not really touched it. They definitely needed to, and I am very happy with the results. Surprisingly good number of advantages for deciding to buy a Mac that doesn't have built-in speakers or display, or even a camera, anything like that. It is surprisingly bigger than you may think when you hold or look at a Mac Mini in person, but in regards to the other iMacs and the other Macintoshes you can buy, it's definitely the smallest, so in a rare instance, Mac Mini, the name, makes sense. But the fact that versus my $2,600 iMac that I bought earlier this year only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and the Mac Mini has four, also has an HDMI port if you want to use older monitors with it, sticks with two USB 3.0 traditional ports, obviously has a headphone jack, an Ethernet port capable of doing 10 gigabit, though unlike the iMac Pro, this one you can decide not to get the 10 gigabit version if you so desire, which I like that option because a lot of us probably would never utilize that but it's cool that you can activate it during checkout if you so need it. In regards to Geekbench scores, and we're talking just performance, the Mac Mini we got is basically the cheapest one you can get with one modification. It's the base starting Mac Mini, except we upped the CPU to an i7 instead of an i3 core, and this is a hexacore i7 processor. So this thing has been plenty speedy if you try to edit things like 4K at 60 and Final Cut, high resolution video, high frame rate, it's going to do absolutely just fine. This particular Mac Mini model cost us about 11 hundred dollars compared to that earlier this year 2017 iMac which is twenty six hundred dollars though the keen difference between these two devices is of course one comes with a 5k display a camera speakers all in one design and also the iMac has a dedicated GPU the Mac mini kind of skimps out on GPU to kind of shortcut its way to just getting to professionals who want a high intensive processor which I definitely think there are a lot of people out there when it comes to video editing audio editing probably even picture editing that wouldn't really notice that much with not having a dedicated GPU of course, having a dedicated one is way better, I understand that, but all my point is is that the Mac Mini is not trying to cater to the gaming market. This is the exact opposite of what you should get. For one, it's running Mac OS. For two, yeah, there's no GPU. This thing is not supposed to be for gaming performance. This is just for people who want Mac OS, for people who want Thunderbolt 3 ports, lots of them, so they can hook up external monitors that support Thunderbolt 3, so they can hook up external GPUs if they so desire, a Thunderbolt 3 external hard drives. What I appreciate about the fact that you can get four Thunderbolt 3 ports at such a low price now is that those ports are incredibly, incredibly capable. In fact, one of the issues we've ran into with the Mac Mini is oftentimes we need more traditional USB ports on it because we're using older tech with it or older accessories like webcams or Elgato cam links and stuff like that. And they need a traditional USB port, but there's only two on this one and we quickly run out of them. So we actually end up using the extra Thunderbolt 3 ports just so that we can put our USB-C dongles in them and have much more ports to work with. Obviously, no SD card slot, but I'm guessing if you're a pro user by now, you've probably made the purchase for some type of USB-C adapter that supports the SD card slot, not to mention micro USB. Also, one Thunderbolt 3 port can grant you access to at least three USB 3.0 ports. So if you need more, obviously having those extra Thunderbolt 3 ports is very, very helpful. And I kind of wish that you could do that on the cheaper iMacs. I wish you didn't have to spend $5,000 on an iMac Pro or have to put up with a MacBook Pro and touch bar just to get four Thunderbolt 3 ports. So I think this Mac mini serves a perfect little middle ground for people who don't need the best display possible, don't need the all-in-one design and that clean look. They just want Mac OS and they want good processing power for their video, audio, or picture editing. And of course, ships with Mac OS Mojave, so you're getting the latest version of Mac OS, and I'm sure this is going to be supported for years to come. But the primary reason I made this purchase with the Mac mini, see, I already have the 2017 iMac, I have the 2017 iMac Pro. We got plenty of things to edit on, but the main reason I wanted a Mac Mini was because we're doing a lot of live streaming between our Talos of Talks Twitch account, our Talos of Gaming Twitch account, and the hassle of moving around IMAX everywhere around our office, which if you check out the latest vlog over on Talos of Talks, you know how widespread our office is and how many different things we have going on at the same time. Moving around and unplugging IMAX every time we need to live stream is an extreme hassle, so the fact that we have something light and portable that's really easy to pack around and just slap it under a TV or slap it alongside 
someone's desk when we need to live stream with it is real, real helpful because as simple as it may sound, doing a multi-cam live stream with three angles of 1080p and being able to live edit that as you are live streaming or broadcasting to an online service, that actually takes quite a bit of processing power. You'd be surprised how often computers running OBS and streaming to different platforms would actually start dropping frames just from the fact that they're running all of these angles together and processing all of this stream and uploading it simultaneously. It's pretty hard to do for a lot of computers, but the Mac mini handles it like a champ. Absolutely no problem with the live streaming aspect of it. And definitely we'll start to get a little bit loud with those fans kick in. But if you feel the top of the Mac mini doesn't really get very hot, it's very good at keeping things cool. And for the most part that I've noticed, it hasn't down throttled to the point that it has to start limiting your performance of the computer over time, because we'll do these multi-cam live streams for hours and hours and hours at a time, yet the Mac mini is able to keep performing at optimum rating and keep getting done the jobs that I need done around the office. So in case you were wondering for this video, we had the Mac mini paired to our Apple cinema display from 2010, which is a very old monitor, but I think a very good looking one. And I think it complements the Mac mini very well. And I'm not John Morrison, even though I'm wearing a crispy aft shirt, I'm more of a team buttery guy because I stick with 60 FPS, but I still thought that we needed to deck out our desk setup just a little bit so that it looked cool for the video. And to those wondering out there, audio or video professionals that want a cheaper way to get to Mac OS and have plenty of processing power, this thing can definitely get most of the jobs you want done. The only holdup you might experience, especially with the model we purchased, is not having a dedicated GPU will probably start to show limitations when you're editing a lot in tons and tons and tons of 4K video, especially if it's shot on very high resolution cameras. Obviously, if you're editing 4K at 60 from your iPhone, it's going to handle it no problem. But if you start using a Blackmagic or a RED or a Sony A7, I think it will run it fine, but you may have to start turning off a few settings that optimize the media for playback to be in the best case scenario. But of course, if GPU is that big a problem to you, you can either consider buying an external one or just get a MacBook Pro or an iMac at the end of the day that have dedicated GPUs that can suit your needs best. But this one was just updated. It's an eighth gen hexacore processor, which means that it's able to smoke my 2017 iMac that cost way more than the Mac mini did. I love the fact that they still support HDMI 2.0, which means that this thing can even connect and optimize itself to 4K TVs, and you'll still have access to four other Thunderbolt 3 ports for your high performance accessories. So yeah, really not that much bad to say about it. It works, works reliably, does its job well, and I think a lot of people out there are going to benefit greatly from this Mac mini upgrade. Did you guys buy a Mac mini? Are you interested in buying one? All that good stuff, let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.